If you've spent any amount of time on martial arts YouTube, you've probably noticed that basically everyone has one opinion they all share, and that is that Taekwondo sucks. It's bad, it's weak, and it's definitely not useful for fighting. Is that true? Yes, but actually no. In this video, and probably to the surprise of everyone, I'm going to go over why I think Taekwondo is very useful for fighting, why it's pretty cool, and the one reason why it does suck. If that sounds interesting to you, make sure you're subscribed and you have notifications turned on, and let's get started. Wah! By the way, as a caveat, I'm not a Taekwondo apologist. I've never taken a day of Taekwondo. I have no horse in that race. This is just my opinion of it. All right, to do this properly, let's just do this in list format. Let's list all the reasons that people dislike Taekwondo, and I'm gonna go through each and every one of them and explain why that's not necessarily true or not necessarily a criticism of Taekwondo. The major criticisms I see of Taekwondo are A, that it's too watered down and it looks more like tag with your foot, two, that its kicks are not very strong, and three, that they don't have any hands. Those are all valid criticisms, but like I said, they're not necessarily a reason that Taekwondo sucks. So what makes Taekwondo watered down? Unfortunately, I think that happens to be a byproduct of a success. I can't pinpoint this on exactly one person, but I can say Taekwondo grew and exploded in the United States, and really worldwide. It is without a doubt the most popular martial art for children, and therefore the most popular martial art, period. You can find a Taekwondo gym in basically every single strip center in the United States. And that by itself doesn't mean the system is necessarily bad, but it does mean they have a program that can easily appeal to a broad number of people. So yes, you might get the hardcore fighter who wants to use Taekwondo to learn how to kick someone in half, but you're also going to get the soccer mom who just wants her kid to have something fun with discipline and structure to do after school. Those are both valid reasons to practice martial arts, but if you want to be able to get the most amount of people in your room, you have to appeal to the lowest common denominator. And that lowest common denominator, by and large, is going to be the hobbyist, whether we're talking about adults or kids. But that doesn't necessarily mean you have to run a McDojo, and that doesn't necessarily mean that all Taekwondo programs are a McDojo. Yes, the structure can easily lend itself to that, but that's not really the style's fault. That really, honestly, is more about the organization and the instructor running the business itself. And the reason we know this isn't a problem with Taekwondo specifically is because there's thousands of gyms out there offering cardio kickboxing and cardio boxing, where you're not really practicing to fight, but you are using fighting movements to get a fun workout in. And nobody's saying that boxing doesn't work in a fight. Now let's talk about criticism number two. Taekwondo kicks are weak. Look, there's a lot of things that go into someone's kick being weak. How much do they weigh? How long have they trained? Are they actually trying to hit hard? I've sparred with dozens of Taekwondo black belts and high level color belts, and I can tell you, without a doubt, those guys kick like a train. The fact of the matter is, it really depends on how you're practicing. If you're training to use your kicks with accuracy, speed, and power, then you're going to be able to throw them with accuracy, speed, and power. But if you're only training to hit random targets while you're spinning in the air and not super concerned about how hard you're hitting those targets, then yeah, you're not spending enough time developing power. And here's really where we can talk about why Taekwondo is considered weak. By and large, and in a sweeping generality, Taekwondo is practiced in semi-contact point fighting, which means they're not actually trying to knock each other out or break any bones, they're trying to score a point. And we can go back and forth about whether that's a valid way to practice combat, but it is a sport unto itself. You don't judge a baseball player by his ability to play football. If you're practicing Taekwondo to get good at point fighting, then you need to be judged at how good you are at point fighting. But if you take Taekwondo from the realm of point fighting and put it into full contact kickboxing or MMA, yes, they're going to be at a disadvantage. Anytime you take any stylist from a semi-contact sport to a full contact sport, there's going to be some growing pains. And that might mean the pain is on their end. It doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be bad at full contact, but they definitely are going to have to make some adjustments. You're only going to be good at what you train for. So while you might be good at point fighting, if you don't train to hit full contact against resisting opponents that can hit you any kind of way, then yeah, you're going to be at a disadvantage. But that doesn't necessarily mean the style is weak. And look, physics are physics. It doesn't matter if you're making contact with your shin, the ball of your foot, your instep, or your pinky toe. If you swing it fast enough with enough force behind it and it makes contact on soft tissue, it will hurt. Yes, you might do more damage if you make contact with a larger bone like the shin, but if you train to do damage with the ball of your foot, you can do damage with the ball of your foot. Now yeah, this also is impacted by the sport that Taekwondo competes in. In a world of point sparring, where a simple touch can result in a point or not, 
it makes more sense to kick with the foot, which is easy to pull away and therefore minimizes the risk of a counterattack, than it is hitting with the shin, which while it does more damage, does expose you more to a counter. But that isn't to say that A, the kicks aren't strong, and B, that Taekwondo fighter can't also hit with the shin. So yes, while the general Taekwondo fighter doesn't kick as hard as the general Muay Thai fighter, that doesn't mean they can't kick as hard, it just means they don't need to. Again, it really comes down to the method of the training. If they train to kick hard and modify as needed, then obviously that skill is always there for them. But if they only ever practice accuracy and never worry about kicking with power, then that power is not going to be there. And now, let's talk about criticism number three, which is that Taekwondo doesn't have hands. Yes, Taekwondo fighters have their hands down low. They don't really move their head and they're not very good at punching. You know who else isn't very good at punching? 99% of people that don't train in a boxing-based martial art. Yes, you might train in a system that has striking, but that doesn't mean you know how to strike. Unless you devote actual time to learning how to throw a straight jab and a straight cross, you're probably not very good at it. And that's not to disparage other people that aren't expert boxers. I'm just saying that Taekwondo players focus so much at getting good with kicking that they can be excused if they don't know how to punch, especially when compared to the person that doesn't know how to do either. And on that note, the reason that Taekwondo players keep their hands so low is not because they think their invisible head movement is so good they're never going to get hit, but because keeping your hands low serves as a great counterbalance so you can throw your kicks much faster and with much more balance. And while we're talking about Taekwondo kicks, what they lack in punching, they make up for with the variety of kicks they have. They don't only rely in front and roundhouse kicks. They also have side kicks, hook kicks, spinning kicks, jumping kicks, flipping kicks. They took out the upper body to really maximize the ability of the lower body. And while we're talking about that, in order to get as good and as versatile with their kicks, they by necessity had to remove the threat of punching. If you're worried about your opponent quickly countering your spinning hook kick with a simple cross to the face, then you're never gonna throw it. If you wanna build confidence in your Taekwondo practitioner, you have to take out the ability for their partner to throw punches at them. Now, this isn't a zero sum game. You can restrict punching to maximize the ability for someone to kick as they learn how to do it, but once they've got the necessary skill for it, I think it's important that they then introduce punching again so now they can learn not only how to throw the kicks, but when to throw the kicks. So yes, in the beginning, it's totally fine to keep your hands down and not really worry about punching. But once you get provision at your 720 kick, maybe it's time you learn to throw a jab cross and a hook. And honestly, I don't know why we don't flip that situation when we're talking about boxing. Because if we're gonna complain that Taekwondo is spending too much time focusing on their feet, boxing literally only focuses on their hands. But no one ever says that boxing doesn't work. Now, there's a whole bunch of reasons why that is the case, because obviously we have professional boxing on TV and they spar like crazy to know that they can make that work. But a simple low kick has taken out dozens of boxers in the cage. And same token, a good 720 kick against a boxer who doesn't know how to keep their guard up can also knock them out. So if we're gonna say that Taekwondo eliminates one part of the body to their own detriment, we have to say the same thing about boxing because ultimately Taekwondo is just boxing for your feet. But actually that's not entirely true because people think that boxing just means punching, but really if we're going back down to what boxing actually means, it means attacking or punching from a position where your opponent can't punch you back. It's less about just brawling and more about strategy and tactics. That's why we don't call it brawling. But on that case, Taekwondo is less about putting yourself in a position where your opponent can't hit you back and more about just getting it there before they can hit you. So they're kind of the same, but not really. Anyway, that's a tangent. But here's the main problem with saying Taekwondo sucks. By and large, the people that are saying this aren't entitled to that opinion. They're not trained or informed enough to understand why they're saying that. Now look, I'm not saying that if you don't train in a martial art, you can't criticize that martial art. But what I am saying is the people who are complaining about Taekwondo, rightfully so, come from a well-informed, knowledgeable position. People who have either fought against or fought using Taekwondo in full contact tournaments or competition tend to notice that Taekwondo hasn't done very well. And yes, we should defer to subject matter experts, but we should also understand that we're playing a game of telephone with them. When they say something like Taekwondo sucks, there's nuance and context to that. But as that message gets passed on from person A to B to C all the way to Z, that message gets reduced down to just Taekwondo sucks. And now people don't have an informed opinion. They just know as a fact, because everyone's saying it, Taekwondo sucks. But if you don't understand the context for that, you really aren't entitled to that opinion. And I'm not saying that to be an asshole. I'm just saying understand there's usually some kind of nuance and some kind of context when someone makes a statement like that. Bottom line, I think Taekwondo is extremely useful for full contact fighting and obviously point fighting. 
having more versatility in your legs only makes you a better fighter if you know how to actually use them. It's not great if you can only land them on paddles or on wooden boards. If you can land them on a resisting opponent, more power to you. And if you're saying that Taekwondo sucks, I want you to ask yourself, does it really suck or do you just not know what you're talking about? So anyways, you guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. If you did, please make sure to subscribe, tap the notification bell, like, share, and leave a comment. If you want to show support to the channel, go ahead and open up the description box. There's a whole bunch of links and codes down there to save you money on fight gear and combat self-defense apparel. As always, this has been Rob from Combat Self-Defense. I want to thank you for all the hard work. Thank you for all the hard work yet to be done. And I'll see you next time. Oh, and by the way, the reason Taekwondo sucks is because it's just poor man's karate.